Summer is here and with that comes parties, shindigs, all the things, so it is time to decorate your home both inside and out. Today I've got 10 amazing Kirkland's dupes for you that are perfect for the warmer weather and I'm gonna show you how you can save a ton of money DIYing instead of buying. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor so if you love that too be sure to hit subscribe so we can be craft buddies. Also a huge thank you to Evite for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk more about them in a little bit but first let's get to the first dupe. We're gonna kick it off with this fun USA Buffalo Check Gingham pillow. I decided to make this with a table runner that I found on Amazon for around 10 bucks, and I started by cutting it into four equal pieces. So I folded it in half long ways, cut it, and then folded it in half again long ways and cut it. This is gonna give me two pillows instead of just one, which is great. Then I'm taking this cutting board that I recently got at Target and tracing it to put it on the front of the pillow. If you don't have this, no worries, just cut out an outline of the US. I'm tracing this backwards so then that way if there's any remnants of my pen it's going to go on the back of the fabric and you won't see it on the front of the pillow. Then I'm going to add some fun personalization and the word home so I'm putting a dot approximately where I live in Illinois and then I am writing home in cursive font so that I have a guide to follow when I embroider. The first step was to just do a simple X, just stitch it really quick onto where the dot was, tie it off, and then I'm going to use some white yarn to create the wording. I'm going to use a technique called a back stitch. So wherever we want to start, we're going to overshoot it just a little bit, and then we're going to back stitch to where you want it to actually start. That's going to create a little loop here, and then we're going to overshoot it again. This time when we come back, we're going to go just line up with the end of that first stitch and you're going to start to get a line here that is going to look like your cursive letters. So I continued that overshooting and stitching back the whole way and this is how it turned out. I tied off the back and then remember we're doing two pillows here so I also did one with USA red white blue same technique. Now it's time to assemble my pillow. So I am taking some Gorilla Glue Sticks and my Sherbonder glue gun and gluing across the top and both sides. I'm leaving roughly an inch around the outside to give it some extra oomph, but if you don't want that, you could definitely do it inside out and then flip the pillow right side out. My last step before stuffing is to take some more hot glue and glue my USA outline to the front. Then I took a pillow I got for a couple bucks at Walmart, ripped it apart and stuffed my pillow, took one last line of hot glue and glued it shut. And I repeated that for my second pillow. These were super easy to put together and I really like the both home that's personalized as well as the USA. You could put whatever you want on it, basically whatever you can write and then stitch over, the sky is the limit. So as a reminder, here is my $30 inspo and I was able to make two of them for 15, so two for half of the price. This next one is a beautiful watercolor canvas, 40 bucks on their website, and I knew I could dupe it with my printables. So I took it one step further and I created a huge pack of patriotic printables for you. I'm printing these on my Epson EcoTank 8500 photo printer that I talk about all the time, but this is just on regular printer paper. I have people ask what I print on. I do a mixture of cardstock and regular paper. You can print it on whatever printer you have. If you don't have a printer, just print it at Walgreens on photo paper, or you can send it to a Fed store. I love to get these frames from Hobby Lobby or also Walmart, but I've got 22 options for you to choose from patriotic options over on my blog. So head to the link down in the description and it'll take you over there so you can download them, print them out and use them. As a reminder, theirs was 40 bucks and mine was only seven because I bought the frame at Hobby Lobby, 80% off. I am so excited about this next one because I saw this on the Kirkland's website, 400 bucks, no thank you. So I headed to Home Depot to show you guys how you could dupe it for a 10th of the price. So for this, you're gonna need four eight foot two by two boards, and you can get these in the lumber section at any hardware store. When you're looking for them, make sure that they don't have any huge chunks out of it like this one. You're gonna wanna check before you put it in your cart. And then you're also gonna want one of these pine boards. Mine is 48 inches, but you could do honestly whatever size you want. You can just adjust the measurements. So for this table, the total cost for the lumber was $36 tax included. So when I got home, I measured to make sure that my width was what I thought it was. I just wanted to kind of know what I was working with. Then I gave it a really good sand and then I got to work cutting my pieces. So I ended up doing the longer pieces at 48 inches. So you're gonna need four pieces at the 48 inches. 
Then I also need four legs at 14 inches of the two by twos. And then I also need these middle braces, which I ended up making 16 inches so that there would be a little bit overhang for my table. Now the goal here is to create two different boxes, one that looks like this with a center support and then your bottom one just without the center support. Now I'm gonna use pocket holes and pocket hole screws for this project because I had it on hand and because I like the look a little bit better, you can hide the heads of your screws. If you don't have this, don't worry, you're literally gonna do the same thing, but you're gonna drill it from the other side. So I'm drilling two holes in all of my pieces and I'm gonna start to assemble my box. So here first, we're gonna make a giant E. So we want our bracing pieces, which are those 16 inch pieces to go into each end as well as the center. And if you don't have the pocket hole screws, you are just going to put your screws in from the outside. I would suggest two or two and a half inch wood screws and just take them directly in from the outside. You'll get the same thing. They just won't be hidden, but no big deal. Then once your E is created, you're gonna take your other 48 inch piece and create your box. Once both boxes are ready to go, we're gonna attach the four pieces that were cut to 14 inches. Those are the legs for our table. And if you're using pocket hole screws, this is how they go in. You just wanna make sure you hide your holes. If not, again, you're gonna screw in from the outside with your wood screws. Once all of my legs were attached, then I added my top piece with that middle brace for the tabletop. And I'm gonna add it with the remaining pocket holes so that everything lines up. Here's what the base is gonna look like when you're all done. And then I did a quick dry fit with my top piece to make sure it was the size I wanted. It gave me about a one inch overhang around the outside. Then I am sanding it really well with a hundred grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. Now to get a matte black look to look similar to the metal base of the other table, I'm using matte black spray paint. I ran out a little bit, but that top's gonna be covered by my tabletop, so I wasn't worried. I decided to go with Minwax Early American to stain the top of the table, and then it was time to assemble once everything was dry. I went through and did three pilot holes on each long side of the table, as well as one in the brace and one on either end. And then I took two inch wood screws and that was the perfect length to not pop through the top of my table. I'm just going right through my pilot holes, drilling it in with my drill, and my table was ready to go. The last step you're gonna wanna do, especially if you're gonna use this as an outdoor table like I am, make sure to coat it with a polycrylic. I like to do two to three coats. That is going to prevent it from warping with the heat, the sun, and also water. You can use whatever sealant you want, but you wanna make sure that you seal it. This is also a great option for inside, but because we're talking summer, this would be great for outdoor parties around the pool, etc. but you could also put this in your living room. Now here's a reminder, theirs was almost 400 bucks, mine was 40, granted their base was metal, but I think they look very similar and I saved 90%. On top of DIYing the decor for my parties, I also love to do the invites myself. Now, typically for a summer party, I would just send out a mass text and let people know the details, but between the RSVPing and the questions and the back and forth, it turns out to be a lot. And also it's super impersonal and kind of blah. So if you have that problem too, you have got to check out Evite. With Evite, I'm able to choose from thousands of free designer-created invite templates for whatever we are celebrating. And then I can easily send them via email or text, and it has been a game changer. I discovered Evite back in 2019 when I used it for Finn's gender reveal, and currently I'm using it for a baby shower we are throwing my cousin. Let me show you how fast and easy it was to create invites for the shower and then send them. On the Evite homepage, I selected babies and kids, but you can see there's a ton of options up here. And then under the dropdown, I'm selecting baby shower. I selected a pre-made design because it fit our theme perfectly, and then I entered all the details. But keep in mind, you can also design your own. Some of my favorite features include the option to poll guests. You can also suggest things to bring, add a link to things like gift registries. And if it's a party that people typically bring gifts but you don't have a registry like a kid's birthday, you can list gift ideas to make it super easy for your guests. Once you're done entering all your info, it's time to invite. And from here, I can set up RSVP notifications, edit guest preferences, I can send reminders to the entire guest list. Another really cool thing is after the shower, I can send a thanks for coming message and then I can upload all the pictures for guests to view. I'm not connected with all the guests on social media, so this ensures everyone can see the photos and guests can share theirs too. 
To make whatever you are celebrating this summer fun, exciting, and extra special, be sure to head over to evite.com slash wit to explore all of their different design options and to send invites for free. So now that you're all set with your invites for your shindig, let's make some patriotic placemats that will be perfect for the summer. We're gonna make these for a third of the cost than what they're selling them for at Kirkland's. These were one of the first things that caught my eye on the Kirkland's website, but 50 bucks for six of them is not in my price range. So instead I went to Target and grabbed these threshold linen placemats for under three bucks each, and I decided to make them over. So I took some masking tape and I taped off a little bit to the left of center, and then I taped off a ton of horizontal stripes for my red and white section. Then I took it outside, grabbed some red spray paint and a box to block the other side so I didn't get any like fallout or weird spatter. And I just sprayed over the top. You wanna make sure you're spraying directly down onto your placemat versus at an angle, just so you minimize any chance of it getting under your masking tape. And then I swapped and sprayed two more times so that I got all six of them painted. Then once I gave it a little bit of time to dry, you don't have to wait long, like five minutes, then I'm peeling off my masking tape to reveal my beautiful stripes. Then I'm going back in with a little bit more masking tape and going right on the edge of those stripes so that the blue and the red are going to come right next to each other. And then to create my stars, I cut two inch stars on Cricut sticky cardstock, but you could do vinyl or you could purchase your own stickers. You don't have to have a Cricut for this. This is just what worked for me. I decided to stick on stars in an alternating kind of diagonal motif, and then I repeated the same step. Now this one, you really wanna make sure you are spraying directly down because you don't want it to get under any of the edges so you have nice, crisp, clean lines. Then I'm peeling off my tape and my stars, and as you can see here, you can reuse them so you don't have to cut enough for all of them. I let mine completely dry overnight, but they're pretty dry rather quickly. And these things are super fun and festive for parties or a great little 4th of July setup tablescape in your dining room. I just paired it with some finds from Hobby Lobby I got recently, and this thing is ready to go. So a reminder, six for 50 or six for $18 total. I saved over 60%. I was excited to see this one too because using the same technique we can make a runner. So I grabbed this plain burlap runner off of Amazon and if I were to do this again before I did this process I would go ahead and press it but with painting it, it ended up kind of getting rid of the wrinkles anyway. I'm just measuring 12 inches from each of the ends and then using some more of those two inch stars on the sticky cardstock to create the same pattern but this time I used more stars. Then I took it outside and did the exact same process. So we're spray painting blue right over our stars. And you wanna make sure you get decent coverage, but if it's slightly patchy, it's no big deal. As you can see here, some of the areas are darker or lighter and that gives it a vintage look. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm peeling off all of my stars and I'm repeating the same process on the other end. So I've got two blue ends. Then we're going back through with some more masking tape going right up to that line like we did with our placemats and then getting ready to do some stripes. I decided to do the stripes like this across long ways, but you could do them across the opposite direction, personal preference. I just did two pieces of my one inch wide masking tape to create some thicker stripes going right down the center. And then I'm using a couple small pieces to act as a spacer tape off some more lines, and then I did one more set on the side closest to the camera. After going through and doing the exact same spray paint technique, it was time to peel off that masking tape and reveal my beautiful runner. You guys know I love patriotic decor, so this stuff makes my heart just so happy. This is great for an outdoor table. It also fits perfectly on the table we made earlier. So this is going to be awesome for get togethers. This would be great around the pool, just to put some snacks on, a ton of different options here. And you could really create whatever you want as far as lemons or watermelons. You could use your Cricut to customize with a family name welcome to the Johnson's pool, etc. And there's a few different ways you can also kind of lay it over your table. I'm so excited to use this this summer. As a reminder, $24.99 versus about 13 bucks. So this one was 45% off. We are a lake family in our house. We enjoy going to the lake every summer. So I wanted to make a tray like this. I found this Mondo Llama tray in the Target craft section for $3. So I grabbed it, didn't know what I was gonna do. And I thought it was perfect for this. 
I decided to take some weathered oak stain that I had and you want to make sure you stir these lighter stains before you use them because it will get the sediment off the bottom that had settled. Then while that was drying after being stained outside, I cut out a stencil. So you cut it out the same as a vinyl decal, but you're going to weed it as a stencil. And then I'm using that same Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape to apply it to the center of my tray. I go to peel and put it down. You can see a little bit more here how I took out the inside of the letters versus the outside. And I'm using my little tape measure to make sure that nothing is not centered and just making sure it's right where it needs to be. Now, because this is stained, I'm using Mod Podge, just a real quick coat over the letters to seal it down. If I had painted my tray, I could paint that color over the top first to seal it. So it just depends on what your base is. Then I'm using a disposable makeup sponge and adding a blue color for my letters. You could use whatever you want with this. I'm dabbing up and down and doing two light coats and then letting it dry about halfway before I peel back my stencil. Now I like to use permanent vinyl for my stencils because it's not staying on that long, but the permanent vinyl I find sticks down better and seals out any paint from smearing. After I got out all of my little pieces with my weeding tool, then I thought it looked a little bit blah, so I wanted to add some lines to either side, similar to the inspo tray. So I'm just taking some painter's tape, taping off two skinny lines on either side, and I just eyeballed this, but you can measure it if you want. And then after that was painted, I went back through with a little bit more tape to create some thicker lines. So it kind of was similar to a ticking stripe, just to give it a little visual appeal. To finish it off, I sanded it, removed any little bits that came off with sanding with a paper towel, and then I wrapped my handles with just some white yarn from Dollar Tree. I honestly think a clearance find has never looked better. This came out super great. I might add our family's name to it, or it might just stay like this, but what I love about these trays too is it could be a tray or it could be a sign like this. And if you plan to use it as a tray, I would just give it a quick coat of polycrylic so in case you spill any water or anything, you are good to go. So their tray, $39.99, mine six bucks, clearance find, 85% off. When I was on the Kirkland's website, I also saw this really fun garland, and you guys know I love garlands, so I had this fabric that I picked up from Amazon, as well as some remnants from that burlap drop cloth from the pillow. So I decided to cut out three to four little triangles, little pie pieces from each of the burlap, the stars, and the stripes. You could do a fat quarter with this. You do not need a lot of fabric for this. Once I trimmed everything down, it was time to start assembling it. And so I folded my pieces in half and went through the top. That just helped me make sure that it was going to hang level. And then when I got to the burlap pieces, they were a little blah to me. So I decided to write USA and then I did stars on two of them and did that same backstitch technique that I showed you in the last project. When I learn something new, I like to do it a lot. I continued my process to string up my fabric in the pattern that I wanted and it was done. It was super quick and easy to put together. This is the first time I've done that stitch and it was fairly easy, very simple, and this is nice and festive. You could do this with lemon fabric or orange fabric, watermelons too. The sky's the limit to whatever your decor is. So as a reminder, there's $12.99. Mine was about five bucks with the fabric. So that is over 60% off. This next one is just an Amazon find versus a DIY dupe, but I love this blanket from Kirkland's. It's $43. I was able to find these for a range of prices from $15 to $18 on Amazon. I will link it all down below. They have beautiful fringe. They have the colors that Kirkland sells in addition to this gray one. It's great for fireworks and for picnics also to go on your blanket ladder. It is a great size and a great price. My main suggestion, just toss it in the washing machine, give it a quick wash wash before you use it but as far as price comparison you can save 65 percent by just getting it on amazon now sometimes in these videos i like to take something more as inspo than a direct dupe and that's what i'm doing with this pillow I decided I loved the look, but I wanted to create a wood sign. So I am using a scrap one by six. And if you don't have a scrap section, check out the miscut section, value wood section, whatever you want to call it at your local hardware store. You could get something like this for $1.50. Now I like to frame out my signs with one by two furring strips. You can get them super cheap. And then I cut them up with this miter box. You can also use a chop saw, but if you don't have room for that or don't have a chop saw, here's how you're going to create your border. If you want more information on how I frame my signs, I've got a full video on that so I will link that up above. 
After a quick sanding, it was ready for staining. So I used Early American. I stained all of those border pieces on all of the edges, as well as the back of my main sign. The reason I do the back is because if you put it on a shelf and you see the back, it's gonna look more complete and put together than an unfinished back. Then when that's dry, I'm flipping it over and doing a full coat of white chalk paint to create a base. Then it's time for our stripes. So I'm going about halfway down and using some one inch painters tape to tape off a couple red stripes. Once my tape is pressed down, I'm using some red Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson to create my red stripes, peeling off the painters tape and then letting it fully dry. Then we're gonna go back in with another piece of tape over the top of that red so it lines up. And I'm just using a blue acrylic paint. This is called English Navy. Then when I peeled it off, my tape job wasn't the best cause I had a little bit of gap. So no worries, just go in with a little bit more paint and fix it. Then this, I measured my top area. It's gonna depend on what, how big your scrap is. I used the font American Typewriter and the text from the USA's Pledge of Allegiance to put on to this. You could do whatever wording you want. You could get an SVG from somewhere. I'm using Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape because it will not peel up all of the paint you just put down. It is my favorite. I recommend it to you guys all the time because I absolutely love it. Then when that's done, your last step is to let it all dry and then assemble. So I like to take my two pieces that are flush with the sign first, take my Ryobi nail gun. It's a power strike. I'll link it down below if you're interested. Put both of those sides on and then my outside pieces overlap. So I'm going to take those pieces and then stick them down with my nail gun as well. Here's what it looks like when it's done and I absolutely love this. The red, white, and blue colors just make me happy and make me think of summer. This is a great addition to my decor. So their pillow was 35 bucks. It's definitely not a comparison, but I was able to make it free with scrap wood or you could probably make it for about seven bucks. That's an 80% difference. And also for my father-in-law's lake house, I thought this would be awesome, a paddle for the wall. So I grabbed some scrap one by 12 pine from my pile, but you can get these for relatively inexpensive. Here's one for $12.99 at Menards, but you really only need about half of it. So very inexpensive. I started by taking a pencil and looking at the inspo image and kind of freehand drawing the paddle. Then I went through with my jigsaw and cut on my little trace line to get the shape that I was looking for. With the jigsaw, I found slow and steady wins the race. So just take it easy, go slow around your corners and it makes it easier to cut things out. Then like everything, I gave it a really good sand with my orbital sander. That just helps because you're not gonna get splinters but it's also gonna make your stain go on so much easier. I'm using Early American again here because it just gives me kind of that Americana vibe and outside summer. And then I decided to add the chevron pattern to the bottom. So to do this, I'm using some more of that one inch painters tape. And what I thought here is I would tape it down, but then I realized that the edges weren't crisp. So I took my little scissors and made a clean edge on my painters tape instead of where I ripped it. And this helped the chevron pattern so much. So I lined everything up and taped it so that I could have two chevron little arrows at the bottom. And then I just added some blue paint to each section with a dabber of a disposable makeup sponge. I was able to remove my painter's tape before it was dry. I wasn't worried because there wasn't a ton of paint on there. And then I repeated the same thing for some horizontal stripes up on the handle. This is where you can get creative, use the colors and the patterns that you want, add your family's name, do whatever you would like. To finish mine off, I wanted to add just a little bit of texture, so I added some white yarn to the handle kind of to go with that tray, and this set is awesome. I am so excited to take both of these up to the lake this summer for a little bit of extra decor. If you're looking for nautical decor, these two little anchors are from Dollar Tree. Now here's my best Vanna White to show you how large this is. It is a pretty decent size. I'm not a small person, so this is a pretty substantial item. Now a reminder, Kirkland's was selling theirs for $75 and I was able to make mine for free, but if you bought the wood yourself, it would be 85% off. I hope this video gave you some inspo to kickstart your summer DIYs. Let me know if you are planning any parties or shindigs this summer. If you are, be sure to check out evite.com slash wits. You can see all of their different options for invites and send them for your event for free. A huge thank you to evite for sponsoring today's video and a huge thanks to you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.